What's a gardener's biggest frustration? Coming up next, we'll talk about the number one thing that drives me crazy when I'm out gardening. Hi, I'm Heidi with Broadmeadow Farm, and if you guessed it's weeds, you're right. Weeds are probably the biggest problem for any gardener out there. So today, let's quickly go over the different types of weeds. There's annual and perennial weeds. An annual weed is one that starts from seed, grows, sets flower, and produces seeds, and dies all in one growing season. A perennial weed is one that completes its growing cycle in one year, but then after frost, it doesn't die, it just goes dormant, and come spring, it comes back stronger than ever. Let's take a walk around the yard and I'll show you some of the weeds that we have in our yard. Here is lamb's quarter. It's kind of got, if you look a little close, it's got little white flecks on its leaves and that's one of the ways to help identify it. I've got my weed book here and I'm gonna show you. This is what it looks like when it goes to flower. And you've probably seen it in your garden. These little things, you, you can roll them off. Next to my flower bed is the narrow leafed hawk's beard. Sometimes it can be confused with dandelion, but its leaves are much longer and flat. And again, we'll look here at my wee book, and that's the flower, and that's how tall it's gonna get. Here we have hemp nettle, not to be mistaken by this one here, which is stinging nettle. So if you look at the leaf shape difference, the one in the photo is stinging nettle, and it has much deeper veins and you'll know for sure if you've got stinging nettle as your arms and hands will certainly be stinging. Another common weed that you'll see in a lot of gardens is chickweed and that's this right here. It's a spreading mat forming weed that has little white flowers. This here is pineapple weed. It's a taller plant that gets a yellow flower. It even has a small little hint of pineapple scent. Next we have the prostrate knotweed. It's a low mat forming annual weed with a really strong root. So make sure you get your spade or a spade fork and loosen the soil up before you try to dig this one out. Another common white flowering weed is this. This is the shepherd's purse. You can kind of look here, it's got a white flower. And each of these little flower heads are gonna put out a little tiny purse-like seed head. Next up we have stinkweed. The flowers are very similar to that of shepherd's purse. Here we have shepherd's purse on the left with stinkweed on the right. Both have similar flowers, but notice the difference in the leaves. These are more serrated and these are more rounded. One weed that I've struggled with quite a bit in our garden is wild buckwheat. You can see here it's got these long tendrils and it will actually literally coil itself around plants and go straight up. So if you can get this one out of your garden right away, that is key. We haven't gone over this one yet, but this is plantain. You can look at the, the leaves, they're quite broad leaf. This spiny one here is Canada thistle. This really narrow leafed one here is toad flax. It gets yellow flowers on it that look like little snapdragons. Many times perennial weeds can be disguised in your flower garden because they're pretty. One such weed is the ox eye daisy. It looks like your standard um, Shasta daisy that you might have in your garden, but one thing is, is it's a much smaller plant. You'll often see it creeping through the grass. The bellflower is another one that is often mistaken by just a regular bellflower in your herbaceous flower garden. Once you know if you're dealing with an annual or a perennial weed, that will help you determine how the best way is to get rid of them. When dealing with annual weeds, the best thing to do is frequent shallow tilling. This can be done with your garden hoe or a little hand trowel. The reason you want to do frequent tilling is that what you're doing is disturbing the soil, which means that the little seeds that have just started to germinate, if you disrupt them or move them around, what you do is expose the little tiny roots to the sun and the wind and they will dry up. The one area in my garden that I do frequent shallow tilling is in my vegetable garden. It's there that I have short-term crops and I don't use any kind of mulch like I would in a perennial bed. So it's easy just to run the garden hoe up and down each row and disturb all those little seedlings. Another way to help prevent weeds is to make sure that your garden, whether it's vegetables or perennials, is really strong and healthy. A strong, healthy garden will help compete against the weeds 
And how it does that is each of the leaf canopy will start to shade the soil, which will help keep the weed seeds from starting to germinate. When it comes to perennial gardens with trees and shrubs in them, one of the best methods of preventing weeds is to apply some sort of mulch. Bark mulch is probably the most common mulch that people are used to see. What bark mulch does is it creates a barrier that prevents weed seeds from getting down into the soil surface and starting to germinate. Landscape fabric is a woven material that allows water and air to penetrate through, but it also prevents weeds from germinating from underneath the soil and growing through. When choosing your landscape fabric, look at the quality of it. You want to make sure that it's actually quite thick and it might say contractor grade on it. The thin fabric that you get at a local garden center may only be good for annual weed protection. In a vegetable garden setting, when you turn over crops year after year, you don't want to invest into a lot of expensive methods of weed protection. So one thing you can do is use grass clippings. Just as you mow your lawn, let them dry and then you put them in the pathways. In the future we'll talk a little bit about raised bed gardening and just some of the pros and cons of what you can expect for raising gardens in a raised bed. As with anything, the number one way to keep weeds out of your garden is to stay on top of your garden. Check it weekly, if not a couple times a week, just to make sure that you're staying ahead of the weeds. The Weeds of the Prairie book put out by Alberta Agriculture is a great reference book for the beginner gardener because it goes step by step. It does a little bit scientific, but mostly it has great pictures and it will help you find things in your garden. Another book I recommend is this weed seedling book. I also picked it up when I was at Oates College. It's put out by Alberta Agriculture. What's nice about this book is it goes through all of the little tiny seedlings, which is at the stage that you actually want to be catching them in the garden. No one is 100% able to keep their garden weed free. So lower your expectations, enjoy the garden. Don't stress out about the weeds that are gonna just crop up here and there. The more you garden, the more you'll be able to identify those weeds starting as little seedlings and you'll be able to get a jump on your garden faster and faster year after year. Thanks for stopping in today and learning a little bit about what the gardener's worst headache is, weeds. Thanks for watching and don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. See you next week. Happy gardening.